I'm going to begin, Alice, by asking, I mean, I was just wondering if this idea to make this movie was one you had for a while and you just thought, right, now I've just got to get pregnant get to pregnant. make this movie. Or if, it, <laughs> if you got pregnant and then went, oh, actually, I've got this really good idea for a movie. Um, that would be a bit method, wouldn't it? To mm. get pregnant in order to fulfil just a prosthetic requirement for a film. Um, no, it was more that I was pregnant and wanted to make a film and kind of thought, how the hell am I going to do this? And it has to be a pregnant character because I'm pregnant. And then the story sprang out of that and I just kind of thought, I, it has to be the most unexpected angle for that character. It can't be anything usual or normal. It has to take her in a bizarre direction. So revenge just seemed the most opposite to being pregnant. Because being pregnant, you're thinking about the future, aren't you? And you're thinking about like fluffy, lovely, hopeful things. And I just thought it would be brilliant to have this character that's just like, no, I can't forget the past. <laughs> I'm not letting go. And I'm really bitter and angry. And I, I like to wear lots of dark colors and, you know, think about death and destruction. Um, and that amused me, really. <laughs> um, and then a story came out of that. Um, yeah, and that's how I started developing the film. And by that stage, I was actually six months pregnant. And by the time I was filming, it, I was seven and a half months pregnant. Because you wrote this screenplay really quickly. Do you actually think yeah. that helps sometimes? Because you haven't got that sort of period of time to dwell on it and to keep overthinking it. You just sort of write it and just do it. I think it was a really good thing, actually, because I think often, um, you know, necessity is a very good uh, creative force you know and it does mean that I wrote it without any sort of guff around it it was just like she does this then she does this it was like it was very, very straightforward um, yeah I, I think it was a really good idea even the title Prevenge it's a kind of does what it says on the tin kind of title because at one stage I was like oh it's a working title so we won't actually use that title uh, and then people were going, oh, y you know, the producers were sort of like, what about calling it Wednesday's Child or something? And I was like, oh, I hate that. I hate that. We're going to have to call it Prevenge because um, it just stuck as well. And these days when Twitter is really important and the Internet is, you know, that's your identity is just a word. I kind of was like, I think it's quite a strength that people immediately think of the film when they hear this word because it's not a real word <laughs> <laughs> we just made it up because <laughs> I like uh, well I can't actually speak about this myself because I've never been pregnant but I get that if you hear from women that you get very kind of um, taps into all your kind of senses you hear and you kind of smell sort of things a lot. Mm. and this is a very visceral piece of filmmaking was that the intention was to, to have the audience kind of embody the, the pregnant protagonist and, and sort of see and view the world as she was yeah, I, I, it was kind of um, a penny-dropping sort of moment, really, that everything in the film is her perspective. And, and she is someone who's kind of descending into madness, so her perception's all getting broken up. But it was also like the things that I was experiencing, you know, experience sleeplessness, psychedelic dreams, um, yeah, strong senses, you know, it's like being a werewolf. You can, like, I remember sort of being on the tube and, like, really being able to smell, like, this guy just standing quite far away from me and just being repulsed by it. Maybe he just really stunk. Yeah, I think yeah. he probably yeah. did, but it was worse for me because yeah. I was pregnant. I was like, like, you know, you feel little tiny things can trigger off this kind of feeling nauseous, you know. And I wanted to put, yeah, all of those experiences, I wanted it to be a sensory kind of experience. But also it's like you know, you've climbed on board this character in a sense that you're being carried around by this character in the same way that the baby is. You're seeing the world through her eyes. So it was really important that you felt everything that she was feeling and saw everything the way she was seeing, even through to madness. You know, there's lots of dream sequences and flashbacks in it, and it's kind of all representing what's going on in her mind. And you did the voice of the baby as well. Yeah. Was that always the intention from the offset, or did you try other things and just realise that it, it, they weren't really working for you? Um, well, we sort of looked at a lot of uh, narration-only characters. So like in things like Space Odyssey, you've got Hal, you've got like Donnie Darko, you've got Frank the Rabbit. And we were kind of looking at all those different characters that are supernatural in some way or paranormal or whatever, and trying out lots of different things. And we did actually try out a child actor, and it was just too cute. It was actually just too, like, ooh, like, jarringly cute. Um, and in the end, just because I was chopping and changing the narration all the time, 
at one stage we put in loads of baby talking and it was like a director's commentary. It was like the baby was just talking all the way through. And then that was too much, so we took stuff out and it was just easier for me to do it. And the incredible sound designer treated the voice in a way that made it completely unrecognisable. And I was wondering, <coughs> too, uh, this is quite an important... I mean, I, I've enjoyed every single murder. But <laughs> apart from Josh, did you have oh. to kill Josh? Yeah. But why? <laughs> He, was, he just he was such a nice bloke. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he was, but she did because the whole point is that she's unremitting. Yeah. You know, she's ruthless and uh, if she'd let him off, she would have stopped doing it altogether. Um so no, not really no. sadly. Like he's he still alive though. Oh, that good. actor. Oh, that's right then. We didn't actually kill him. Right. He's he's all right. It looks like he can knock up a quite a good pasta dish as well. <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> he's quite good at all that stuff, isn't he? It's like, oh, maybe you could cook, cook me some pasta. <laughs> Look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> and I'm just wondering I mean, too, if you're because I mean obviously this you, you well obviously you were pregnant so you've you've had a daughter since the, this this movie was made. Are you looking forward to sitting down with her when she's older and watching it with her? And is that is that something that you kind of took into consideration consideration at all when you were making this movie? Um, I didn't think about it at all. I have to be honest, I did not think about her watching this film. I was like, oh yeah. Like, um, I suppose the thing is, a lot of my stuff is dark anyway, so a lot of my stuff she won't be able to watch for ages. But this is actually kind of about my attitude to pregnancy, so I think I have to really kind of say, you're really nice, I don't think that you're evil. You're not evil and I like you. So I think that's the way I have to prime her to watch this film, to kind of understand that it's not like a really nasty <laughs> nasty film about how horrible she is. As long as you establish the fact that you like her, I think it should yeah, be Yeah, right. yeah. Um, and my final question, just wondering uh, if you're intending to direct again in the future, and if you, yeah, if there's any kind of projects in the pipeline that you'd like to, to, to get involved from behind the camera as well. I am making another film, hopefully quite soon, um, I haven't written it yet, but it is an evolution further of revenge, I think. It's going to be even crazier, and it's going to it's be... It's time we've got twins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's exactly the same story, but with twins. Yeah. Look who's talking to. Um, no, it's, it's kind of a conceptual thing, and it's still really dark and, and funny, but I think it's going to be... Um, a lot weirder and sort of light, more light-hearted in some ways. Right. Weird is good. Yeah, mm. weird is good. And I think light is good as well. I just feel like there's a lot of heavy stuff happening in the world and maybe it's time to make something. I mean, like Brexit and Trump has happened since I made this film. And I'm just like, I've got to stop putting stuff right. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time today. Much appreciated. Cheers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!